welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Many of evil's greatest champions aren't household names. If you were to ask me who in history has cast the coldest shadow over civilization, who has left the sickest funk on the world, from all the criminals and killers to the dictators to the worst mad scientists, there is one man, in my opinion, who doesn't get the proper credit. Edward Bernays showed it was easier to conquer a society from within. Bernays invented the science of propaganda. He was also the primary architect of modern consumer culture. Focusing on the worst aspects of human nature, Edward Bernays developed a model to control society through instilling a general sense of loneliness, inferiority, and disconnection from fellow human beings. He was an American publicist who was generally considered to be the pioneer of public relations, advertising, and spin. Bernays was also nephew of famous psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud. He was respected, even adored by intellectuals at the time. Edward Bernays was a Jewish man who was admired by even the Nazis for the power of his ideas. He made manipulating groups of people an art and a science. Edward was only a year old in 1892 when his parents moved to New York City from Austria, where his uncle, Sigmund Freud, was just beginning his illustrious career of promoting pseudoscience and connecting dreams to penises. Edward's mother was Freud's sister, Anna, and his father, Ellie Bernays, was the brother of Freud's wife, Martha Bernays Freud. After graduating from high school at 16, Edward attended Cornell University at the behest of his father, where he earned a degree in agriculture. By the time he graduated, Bernays had already decided he wanted nothing further to do with plants or animals. He started his public relations career editing a medical review journal. Then he got involved producing stage plays with political and industrial objectives in mind. Bernays was interested in psychology and the social sciences. He believed that by understanding the functioning of the mind, one could influence the mass human collective. He referred to this scientific technique of brainwashing, or opinion molding, as the engineering of consent. Bernays considered most people totally irrational, driven by base desires and herd instincts. He thought they could easily fall prey to the motives of skilled, persuasive intellectuals with a plan. Over his career, Bernays acquired an impressive list of clientele, ranging from media organizations like CBS to corporate clients like Cartier, the American Tobacco Company, and Procter & Gamble. He was also a highly paid consultant, hired by the U.S. government and various politicians. In one of his advertising campaigns, he wanted to increase cigarette sales among women. In those days of the early 20th century, women smoking, especially in public, was considered inappropriate and unladylike. Bernays consulted with a psychoanalyst who claimed that cigarettes could be used as a symbol for femininity suppressed by the modern world. On Easter Sunday, 1929, Bernays organized a parade in New York City, featuring a large group of women marching down the street and smoking cigarettes, as they called them, torches of freedom. Bernays didn't smoke himself, and he persistently tried to get his wife Doris to quit. Bernays never imagined that the Third Reich would use his ideas on public relations. Despite Bernays being Jewish, head Nazi propagandist Joseph Goebbels took a fancy to his ideas and became an avid admirer of his writing. Right after becoming the Minister of Propaganda for the Third Reich, Goebbels started implementing Bernays' ideas and work in Germany. I think Edward Bernays is best described through the quotes of Edward Bernays. He said, the American motion picture is the greatest unconscious carrier of propaganda in the world today. It is a great distributor for ideas and opinions. The motion picture 
can standardize the ideas and habits of a nation. Because pictures are made to meet market demands, they reflect, emphasize, and even exaggerate broad popular tendencies, rather than stimulate new ideas and opinions. The motion picture avails itself only of ideas and facts which are in vogue. As the newspaper seeks to purvey news, it seeks to purvey entertainment. Anyone familiar with vanadium knows how much I love movies, but I think Bernays is right about this one. He also described how mass indoctrination is actually important for democracy. He said, a conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. We are governed, our minds are molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested, largely by men we have never heard of. This is a logical result of the way in which our democratic society is organized. Vast numbers of human beings must cooperate in this manner if they are lived together in a smoothly functioning society. In almost every act of our daily lives, whether in the sphere of politics or business, in our social conduct or our ethical thinking, we are dominated by the relatively small number of persons who understand the mental processes and social patterns of the masses. It is they who pull the wires which control the public mind. This is one of his insights that I totally agree with. Bernays said, men are rarely aware of the real reasons which motivate their actions. The great enemy of any attempt to change men's habits is inertia. Civilization is limited by inertia. He also said, universal literacy was supposed to educate the common man to control his environment. Once he could read and write, he would have a mind fit to rule. So ran the democratic doctrine. But instead of a mind, universal literacy has given him rubber stamps. Rubber stamps inked with advertising slogans, with editorials, with published scientific data, with the trivialities of the tabloids and the platitudes of history, but quite innocent of original thought. Each man's rubber stamps are the duplicates of millions of others, so that when those millions are exposed to the same stimuli, all receive identical imprints. It may seem an exaggeration to say that the American public gets most of its ideas in this wholesale fashion. The mechanism by which ideas are disseminated on a large scale is propaganda. In a broad sense of an organized effort to spread a particular belief or doctrine, he said, there are invisible rulers who control the destinies of millions. It is not generally realized to what extent the words and actions of our most influential public men are dictated by shrewd persons operating behind the scenes. In place of thoughts, it, Bernays means society here, it has impulses, habits, and emotions. Men are very largely actuated by motives which they conceal from themselves. It is evident that the successful propagandist must understand the true motives and not to be content to accept the reasons which men give them for what they do. He said, No serious sociologist any longer believes that the voice of the people expresses any divine or specially wise or lofty idea. The voice of the people expresses the mind of the people, and that mind is made up for it by group leaders in whom it believes and by persons who understand the manipulation of public opinion. It is composed of inherited prejudices and symbols and cliches and verbal formulas supplied to them by the leaders. The average citizen is the world's most efficient censor. His own mind is the greatest barrier between him and the facts. His own logic-proof compartments, his own absolutism, 
are the obstacles which prevent him from seeing in terms of experience and thought rather than in terms of group reaction. It is chiefly the psychologists of the school of Freud who have pointed out that many of man's thoughts and actions are compensatory substitutes for desires which he has been obliged to suppress. A thing may be desired, not for its intrinsic worth or usefulness, but because he has unconsciously come to see it as a symbol of something else, the desire for which he is ashamed to admit to himself. A man buying a car may think he wants it for purposes of locomotion, whereas the fact may be that he would really prefer not to be burdened with it and would rather walk for the sake of his health. He may really want it because it is a symbol of social position, evidence for his success in business, or as a means of pleasing his wife. I think Edward Bernays' contribution was to make humankind less kind and less human. Those of influence are often more dangerous than those who are powerful. They can quietly inflict irreparable damage, and instead of being charged with crimes, People like Bernays get the key to the city. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.